The E in double agent refers to elementary reactions. And what an elementary reaction is, is one that occurs in a single step without multiple sub-steps and without any intermediates being formed along the way. And elementary reactions are often straightforward where it's just two molecules colliding with each other and reacting, but they don't always have to be. In this case, we have two NOs and an O2, and those all collide at the same time and form two NO2s. And so this is an elementary reaction, and to know this, you'd probably have to be told in some sort of prompt that it was an elementary reaction. But when you're working with elementary reactions, it makes your rate approximations a lot simpler. And there are a few reasons why. One is because, remember that with all rates, you can't use the stoichiometry as the exponent that you raise some number to in the rate expression. However, if it's elementary, if it occurs in one step, then you can use the stoichiometry as your exponent. So you can use lowercase a as the alpha and lowercase b as the beta. And so for this reaction, because you have two NOs, the rate will be equal to k, which is some rate constant, times NO raised to the second power. So it's second order with respect to NO. And you only have a single O2, and so that O2 is raised to the first power. So it's first order with respect to O2, second order with respect to NO, and it's third order overall because it's second order here, first there, and you add those two together. So that's one very nice thing about elementary reactions. If it occurs in one step, then you can use the stoichiometry as the exponents that you raise these quantities to in your rate expression. The other thing that an elementary reaction allows you to do is it allows you to express the rate in various ways. So you can express the rate of this reaction as negative one over A, where again, A is the stoichiometry and uh, because it's elementary, the stoichiometry is also the order. And so it's gonna be negative one over A times the change in A over time. And that is going to be equal to negative one over B times the change in the concentration of B over time. You could also express the rate in terms of C as positive one over C times the change in C's concentration over time, or as positive one over lowercase d times the change in D over time. Notice that you use negative values here and here because as this reaction moves forward, you're going to be depleting A. And so the change in A will be negative even if the rate is positive. And so if this number is negative, you need a negative sign over there to end up with a positive rate despite the change of A being negative. These two are positive because as it moves forward, if the rate is positive, then you start to see an increase in C and so you don't need a negative sign to counterbalance that. And be aware that this rate is the same as this rate. So you could express something as one over lowercase c times the change in concentration of c over time. You could express that as being equal to k times the reactants over time, k times a to the a and b to the b over time. And so realize that because this is one way you can express the rate laws, this can be used in conjunction with other ways of expressing the rate laws in a more complicated high level question. But if you understand these facts about elementary reactions, that you always use stoichiometry as your order, and that you can express it in terms of one over the stoichiometry times the change in that quantity over time, if you realize that this could be equal to that, then you'll be ready for any elementary reaction rate problem that comes your way.